Well, you know, it's springtime here in the land of the CRT, and I have lots and lots of work to do here. Let me show you what we're going to get started with. I mean, this shop is almost completely filled up, and since it's warm outside, we can get to work on some consumer-grade CRTs. Check it out. I have a lovely family of Toshibas here, and there's the PVM 3230, but today, oh today, yes, today we need to look at this, the JVC D32 inch. This is the AV32 D303 model of this beautiful CRT that you see <laughs> right behind my head right here. And I went through and did a full restoration on it. It was quite an intriguing television. I think you're gonna like the results of it. But I also need to warn you, this is a dangerous one. It has a big, powerful zap that I was anticipating. So I was set up to uh, capture that on video for you. So remember, don't try this stuff at home if you don't know what you're doing, but let's get into the restoration here of the JVC. D32 inch consumer grade television. Well, yes, we have it here, Cole. Where are you, Cole? There you are. Yes, it is here. This is the JVC D series. This 32 inch beauty is here in the shop. And man, just look at that glorious, glorious shadow mask, too. Look at the curve on there. The curve is amazing on the glass. Anyway, this is getting a full restoration today. So we're going to open up the shell here in a second. First, let's take a look here. Yes, BBE, okay. Yes, a nice drop tray. Input buttons, menu, etc. But the real thing is the High resolution 32 inch tube, 32 inch tube here. That's the real reason everybody loves the D series. Plus, it has that awesome look. Now this variant is the, where is it? There it is. It is the AV32D303 variant, 32 inches from April of 2002, chassis number A107. You just got to see the first fired up testing of it. Before it gets restored, we've been testing S video out of a Super Famicom. And we have some amazing inputs in here. Look at that composite S video, component video, RF video. It is analog only television. But man, is it beautiful. Let's get all those screws out of here and get the shell off this big thing. It looks like it's kind of dirty in there. Right? What do you think, Cole? Pretty dirty? Yeah? Well, I don't know what you're finding. Anyway, let's get into it. Check out the filth Ugh, inside this JVC. Let's start just at the top. Look, I don't understand this. There's like copper cabling or something right here. Look at that. Or tinsel. I'm not sure what the heck that is just up there next to the anode cap. That looks metallic, awesome. Got a thick layer. I mean, this looks, uh, this looks, this has to be cigarette smoke dust. Just, yeah, Cole, stay back. It's pretty nasty in here. Uh, definitely gotta be cigarette smoke right there. That, that's, see how that's thick? Look at that thickness on that thing. Oof. Um, yeah, thankfully the TV still works, so we can get it out of here, but it's, it's, so, it's so nasty. Look at all that. It's about as nasty as the 36 inch one I had a few years ago. Not as bad, I don't think, but there's definitely some stuff all over it. Um, this chassis, single board there, is gonna come out and get serviced. This is the tuner. And volume board, it's not going to get recapped. Who cares about that, right? Um, but the other will be recapped down in here. I noticed that this board looks to be pretty simple in design, meaning a lot of these points down in here have no hardware in them. 
uh, for like a sound canceling. The audio block obviously has stuff in it. But if you look down in here, there's a lot of stuff not present. Um, and then over here, there's like, it's marked for a digital comb filter, but there's really no hardware over there. Oh wait, no, there's some on this side. Yeah, there it is down here, but a lot of it's unpopulated. So this was a board design that was used for different things, but I've got to get it cleaned up. Ugh, I need to set up and discharge it so I can just pull that board and get this nasty stuff out of here. Here's a look at our tube. Now this says M. 80JUA061X06. And it says the tube was made in the USA. And if I'm not correct here, someone can mention it in the comments, but this may be a Panasonic tube if it's unmarked like that. It's not, I don't believe it's the Thompson tube. That would be marked. And uh, so that's interesting. But yeah, I'm going to have to clean it up a little bit and get it discharged. Let's see if it zaps. Let's see what happens on this 32 inch, if it will indeed spark. So I'm trying to get my shadow out of the way here. Come in from the bottom. Pull that cap back so you can expose that metal. Let's see. Oh yeah! We definitely got a zap there. And hopefully Hopefully that showed up on camera. So this version has to be discharged because there is no actual bleeder resistor on this model. Very good to know. So sparks will fly. I'm getting ready to clean out the dust from the back of this set and I'm just gonna blow it out. We're gonna do air compressor vision for this segment. Let's see how it works.
Here we go. Fully sparkled to clean back here. The anode cap area. Looks good. Yoke's been cleaned, so has the neck. And inside of here has all been cleaned. It's ready for the boards to be reinstalled. I also went ahead and removed the button boards back there, which you can do pretty easily by just removing some screws. And then you can get the button board out. Don't forget the little indicator. There's a little clear LED cover there. And then you can get this input board out also. And that way I can take these down in the shop, clean them up a little bit better, and I'll replace, I'll replace that capacitor. And I'll replace all those little capacitors on there too, just to make sure it's good to go. And then we'll reassemble it. Okay, so the hardware restoration was all done right here in the bunker. And so that was filmed live. If you want to check that out, I'll put links to the live show in the description for this video. And you can go back and check the playbacks and watch that hardware getting restored live. But what that process entails is removing all the old capacitors after the board has been cleaned. Then you clean the board again. Then you install new capacitors. And when you do that, you also reflow solder all over the board uh, just to make sure that you have good continuity on all your traces and everything. And while you're doing that, you can also check for other visible uh, repairs that might need to be done. You could find other components that are in need of changing or servicing. So you can do that at that time. But all that was again done on live stream. So check those shows out if you want to. And then all the boards were put back into the CRT after cleaning and QCing everything. All right, guys, we've got our JVCD series put all back together and everything in here has been thoroughly cleaned up and pretty much fully restored. The neck board right here, you can tell it's been fully resoldered. Caps have been replaced on there too. There's a couple of them in there, right there. Same thing down in here, we have the power block up in that section, the deflection block over in this section, that's all been taken care of and everything's back together. I have run some tests on it, everything looks great. Um, I got the focus as well as the screen pot adjusted, that's really the only thing to worry about adjusting manually back here. Uh, there is no convergence, master convergence control for like horizontal static convergence, you just have the rings, which I'm not adjusting on this set. And that's it, so I'm gonna get the back put on here. So the back's on the TV now, and I'm gonna get ready to show you some final footage. I oh, was able to get it all cleaned up, and it's working beautifully. And I'm gonna put together something to show you some footage of the component video input here on the back of the JVC. All right, guys, so let's give a review on this television. It's been a while since I've done that. I've got like the A, B, C, D, F <laughs> for worst uh, CRTs, but this one, the JVCD series, is definitely among that A tier on the list. I mean, first off, let's talk about the tube. The tube is huge. It has a really great look. The bubble on it is very beautiful. I love bubble tubes, especially when you get larger size on the tube. But uh, at the end of the day, it looks great. It works great for 240p and 480i. It has an awesome input uh, selection on it where you have a composite video with stereo input on the front and then you have a composite video with stereo input on the back as well as S-Video S -video support, RF support, and you even have component video, which is awesome for any retro gamer out there who wants to try to get higher resolutions out of their gaming consoles and into an old standard definition television. Now the drawback is it is very big, it's heavy, and um, obviously if you have to service it, you have to discharge it, and it's got that big zap on the anode cap, so you have to be really careful to mess around with anything like that. It also does not support any resolutions over 480i, so you're not gonna get any 480p or anything higher than that. Uh, this is an NTSC television specifically, so it's not gonna work with PAL signals. It's really gonna only work with North American signals for your gaming consoles and video outputs. Now it does have a really nice sound system on it that JVC developed, so you don't have to have an additional sound system to go with this if you're setting this up for a retro setup. You can use the sound on the television 
and it also has an awesome remote control. You do need the remote control to get in and access the service menu and change a lot of the functions and settings in your CRT, so you want to be mindful of that. Another great thing is this is a becoming a more and more and more documented CRT, so we're getting a lot of great information published to the internet, and as we learn more and more about the different variants on it, then uh, you'll be able to figure out which one will work best for you, size and model type. So all in all, again, this is getting right on that A grade. I'm not gonna give it an A plus because it's not perfect, but it is gonna get a solid A. Let's give it like a 93, okay? There you go, a 93 that whoops the crap out of the Toshiba flat screen with the <laughs> leaded solder. So enjoy JVC fanboys. All right, well, there you have it, the restoration on the JVC D-Series 32-inch television. Now, I do have a full capacitor list of all the capacitors I changed in this CRT, and I will uh, direct those to my Patreon page, so if you want information like cap kit lists and things, that's where I publish them. They are for Patreon members, so thank you everybody who does get work done. This was a Patreon member who got this particular set serviced. So if you want more information about that, I always have a link to that in the description of the video. Um, otherwise, this is an awesome set. You can still find a lot of these JVCs. Now do be aware that there are a variety of them, so you need to be aware which model number you are looking at, and that will all be listed on the back because they do tend to have different tubes in them sometimes and a little bit different hardware and build outs and as far as like the inputs that are available in all of them, they do vary based on uh, those model numbers. So check into that, reference that with the documentation you can find online when you're looking at these sets. And the other funny thing is, is they always seem to be extremely dirty whenever I find them uh, inside. So uh, I'm not sure if other people notice that when they go and rescue these that they're finding them extremely dirty inside, but this is like the second or third time I found these were just caked, caked, caked on dust. So be prepared for a big cleanup. Uh, but again, they're awesome TVs. They could get the job done. They have big screens. The bubble tube is really unique and cool on this set. The next best thing I think you could get in America that would compare to this style of a tube would be something from like Toshiba and their sets that are still tubed or their sets that are still curved like this one. But next, we're gonna get into a Sony Trinitron, and that's gonna be one of the very last Trinitrons Sony ever made, the Sony KV-20FS120. This is right before Sony started selling Bravias and was pretty much done with Trinitrons. So I wanna show you that last model coming up next time. Until then, I hope you all have a wonderful week, and I'll see you next time with some more retro content.